I love trying to see this stuff, trying to bring it to life, trying to shed sort of like light on it and visualize it. And actually you realize that what they're doing here, what they've been tasked with doing, it is hard work. Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by two Brits and a Bible. This is day 33 covering Leviticus 5, 6 and 7. <laughs> in Leviticus 5, the Lord tells Moses the laws regarding swearing and touching unclean things. Leviticus 6, the Lord tells Moses laws regarding deceit and laws regarding trespass. trespass. Uh, Leviticus 7, Lord uh, tells Moses laws regarding burnt sin, wave offerings, and forbids fat and blood. Wonderful. Um, so I think both of us ended up running a bit short on yesterday. We wanted to dive back in. I know you had a couple of things to say on the end of yesterday. Absolutely. So just uh, first thing is the fact that you had to sprinkle the blood seven times, and that is repeated multiple times to do the sacrifice. Anyone who's listened to the podcast even briefly will know that I go on about the numbers in the Bible, but that number seven, that number completion, it links to this, this covenant between us and, and God, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And then uh, the fact that when you sacrifice it, it's a female lamb, I conspiracy theory or, you know, above my pay grade, but I think that might be some sort of respect or space for Jesus because he's the perfect male lamb symbolically. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just found that interesting. So there are two things from yesterday. I'm less sure on the male land thing, but also yeah. about my pay grade. Um, the thing I wanted to touch on was firstly, obviously there are some very strict dietary requirements we started talking about, which again, the apologetics Bible started talking about that along the lines of they had these very harsh requirements because other religions in their worship to their pagan gods and their sort of festivals and stuff would be able to eat whatever. And it was kind of to keep the Israelites from going over and experiencing that way of life, probably similar to an Amish thing today, really. Mm. Um, and also similarly for uh, in preventing or discouraging intermarriage with other religions and other people, because you would assume that they wouldn't really want to come and abide by the strict dietary requirements of the Israelites. And so that's one of the reasons that it was there. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to as well touch here, and it's kind of linking in today and yesterday. It's a nice little bridging gap there, really, because in today we find out about the uh, the various sin offerings given. And if you can't afford a ram or a lamb or go whatever, then you can give two turtle doves. And actually, I'm going to fast forward. Then I'm going to go backwards, because if we fast forward to the New Testament, we actually find out that in Luke 2.24, Mary and Joseph give a uh, their sin offering of two doves and so it suggests that they were not in a very wealthy sort of place themselves it also for me kind of shows some of the importance of why this stuff's written down because that is at the end of the old testament it's at the end of 400 years of silence and mary and joseph are still abiding by the stuff that's written down here by moses so and I think I mentioned it last year at some stage while we were doing the Bible in a year, dude, with Josh, that mm. a lot of the stuff in here that we consider quite dry and dull isn't necessarily for our purpose. Mary right. and Joseph would have needed to have read those rules and those laws by Moses to know what they had to sacrifice. Just because we're, it's not important to us, it doesn't matter to us, doesn't mean that it wasn't important to somebody that needed to hear about it, that needed to read it. Absolutely. And obviously, we're not held to the old covenant We we have a new covenant through Jesus. So of course, some of the there's wisdom in the whole Bible. But at the same time, there are certain laws and rules that these people had to abide by. Yeah, in their culture, that we don't have to eat, i.e. I love eating bacon. Yeah. <laughs> um, so something you said about the two turtle doves. Oh, you're going to flash back. Sorry, go for it. Yep. Because then yesterday in Leviticus four, it said about if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, they must bring a young bull without defect. Now, a bull, one would assume, is a much larger, well, you don't have to assume it's a larger animal, it's larger than a it dove, animal, but you'd yeah. assume it's a far more costly animal as well. And that, again, going to the New Testament, where it says about teachers and leaders, if you sin, effectively, you have a, a larger consequences, there's more weight on your shoulders, you're held to a higher standard yeah. in the New Testament. 
because you are responsible for leading people. And right. it's the kind of same thing in there that if the priest sins, they have a higher, um, a higher sacrifice, really, a more a hundred a hundred percent. A hundred percent. With great power comes great responsibility. I love the fact that God doesn't really mind what you offer. I mean, he obviously minds what you offer, but there are tiers to what you can offer based on your wealth. So if you can't afford the pigeons, you can even give a tenth of an ether of the finest flower as a yeah. sin offering yeah. if you're poorer. There is a link to Jesus as well. Jesus talks about how he'd rather get a penny from a, 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 an impoverished woman than a large sum of money from someone wealthy. It's about heart postures as you've mentioned before, and I, I think that's really important. True. Um, so um, I just wanted to say there's lots of practical things in Leviticus 5 and 6 as well. So if you uh, do not testify in uh, a legal dispute when you know information that that is important to the trial, then you will be held responsible yourself as basically as a criminal. So mm -hmm. that's Leviticus 5.1. I think that's amazing. I think it's good that the society is trying to actually have a fair and just society and that you're a part of that and you must do that i also like the idea that the unclean are actually split off from i'm, I'm forwarding fast forwarding now to the 721 but if you're unclean then you are cut off from the society at least temporarily mm -hmm. and again they're trying to build a society it's a fragile society they need to have these rules and laws in place to actually function and to get on with their neighbors otherwise it's going to fall apart and they're going to end up worshiping you know golden calves again and whatever yeah very true also what is a wave offering by the way because i love <laughs> it it's been like oh my god just just a subtle little wave like sorry <laughs> i wish they were that simple right i don't know what a wave offering is but what i will say is i thought of the mexican wave personally i love <laughs> the idea they all get in a group together and they're all just like Whoa, we're all sinners we're all terrible God's in the middle like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that would be pretty sweet um so uh just trying to see what other things oh yes so i'll yes i'll let you touch upon the leviticus 613 i think yeah i mean it's something which you sort of mentioned a little bit because you were saying about how you'd spotted about the uh fire had to be kept going mm -hmm. and kept burning and continuously couldn't go out you referenced yeah. lord of the flies i've not read that you have done yeah so very quickly, uh, I'm an English teacher is like my main job. So I'm a bit of an English nerd. And so Lord of the Flies, one of the things that the boys are trying to do to keep civilization going is to keep the fire going. They're like the fire mustn't go out. And then the fire does go out and savagely ra raids the island. And it was a Christian writer. So uh, William Golding. So there's no doubt that he knew and was aware of this and that's probably one of the references he used oh, that's cool man i didn't know yeah, it is cool what what struck me in that passage because i had it written down as well was actually we have a fireplace here like a wood burning fireplace where we live and to we don't have to keep it going we have other heat as well but to cut wood to like we use chainsaws and log splitters but back then again they had to be using axes basically you'd assume and to be cutting and hauling wood to keep a fire burning constantly to burn stuff like bulls like these boys must have been in insane shape you've got moses hiking up and down you've got Aaron <laughs> Axe wielding. like he's, he's a, at this stage he's a lumberjack the amount of stuff they're doing with these animals he's a flipping butcher and then in leviticus where is it 627 it says if any blood spatters on a garment it must be washed he's wow. a dry cleaner as well yeah <laughs> like, he's a one-man village he's a jack of all trades it is but I feel like Aaron and Moses are trying to outdo each other because Moses <laughs> has the fantastic glutes and hamstrings from going up and down Mount Sinai. And then Aaron's like, yeah, but look at my pecs and abs from chopping wood all day and wa washing clothes. Seriously. Yeah. But it does, it just, it's one of those things again, by now again, following this podcast, you probably realised it. I love trying to see this stuff, trying to bring it to life, trying to shed sort of like light on it and visualise it. And actually, you realize that what they're doing here, what they've been tasked with doing, it is hard work. You were mentioning yesterday, if they're on the wrong side of the tabernacle, they had to wander all around the other side to go to a very specific spot to do it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's hard work to maintain all this. So it's very impressive. It but really is. On that note, we're going to finish today. Um, thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to visit the Facebook page, Two Brits and a Bible. And please consider liking and subscribing to help spread the word of God.